Hello again. Thanks for tuning in to another Daily Encouragement. I hope your week has been blessed, and I hope this video is able to give you a, a word of encouragement. I hope it's able to shine a little bit of light in the darkness in this world. And really, I want us all to focus on Jesus, focus on heaven, and focus on the things that will get us closer to that goal. And praise God for the opportunity to come together like we do and to to utilize the technology, utilize the resources we have, and still stay connected. So let's get into the topic of today, which is the Lord's Prayer. This is such a awesome and amazing way that we can connect with God, the creator of the universe, the, the, the master and the artist of all things. And he has blessed us with this opportunity to come to him at any time. That's amazing. That's awesome. Really comprehend that and really understand that we have a God that is so compassionate and wanting to be in relationship with us that he is willing to hear our prayers and our desires and our cries all the time, 24-7. So on topic with today for the Lord's Prayer, I want to get into what it actually means and break it down on a very intricate level. Why did Jesus tell the apostles, when you pray, pray in this way? What does each individual line or word, for a matter of that fact, truly mean? And we're going to break it down and we're going to go through it. So grab your Bibles, follow along if you like to, or just listen and really let it convict you in your heart. So the first line going into the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven. God is our Father whose authority that we submit to. He is our Father. We, we think of our earthly father as our, our, our dads, so to speak, but our, our true Father, our Creator is God. That's awesome. That unifies all of us. In Isaiah 66, 1, it says, Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So that puts in perspective of our Father is in heaven on the throne and we are earth, we are the footstool. We have a purpose and a use, but the true deity lies in heaven. Moving through the prayer, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy, revered, and consecrated. That's the reality of God's name alone. His name is so righteous and powerful that even the demons fear the name alone. Not to mention what magnificent things that he's even done for us over all of the throughout history and humanity and for the days to come even. His very name speaks volumes. It says this in Isaiah chapter 25 verse 1, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will give thanks to your name for you have worked wonders. Plans formed long ago with perfect faithfulness. That is to say the plans that we cannot even comprehend or fathom. And I'm a planner and I like to think ahead. But this totally throws me into awe because if God predestined and preplanned things that we can't even know yet or we will never know maybe, that's someone that we should submit to and respect on the level of a power that he has. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now this one is very interesting because it's a little bit more literal. We eagerly await the day we enter heaven and sit at the feet of Jesus. But until then, we're here on earth and we're called to carry out his will. So the will of Christ in heaven carried out here on earth. That's a daily challenge. Give us this day our daily bread. So God provides for us daily. I would argue that um, our, our very oxygen is provided for us. The air we breathe, the, the, the abilities that we have as humans born and blessed with, but also our daily needs of hunger and thirst and clothes and provisions, and they're all taken care of. Now, a secular view would, to say, would be to say, all those things are based off science, or the grocery store provided food, and the clothing store provided clothes. But at the root, and you backtrack and trail all of those things to their origins, it all roots from earth, and earth is blessed by God. Case closed. God provides for us just as he provides for all animals and all living things. And it says in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I challenge you to really take that into account whenever you're in need. 
And you will be amazed in the ways that God blesses you through people, things, what we, we, we would normally call instances or coincidences. Those are acts of God. Further down the prayer, forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Now it says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 22, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus says to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, I don't think anybody is going to take that literally and only apologize up to that number. But the emphasis is on never-ending forgiveness, compassion, love. That's how we're to... God has blessed us with that love and forgiveness by sending Christ. And Christ set that example many times through all people and all of his interactions. And that's what we are to follow. And that's the example that is so challenging for this world today to understand that our free will and choice implies that we ought to love our enemies and forgive the, our transgressors. But that is what Jesus intended. That was as what Jesus did. And that is what will bring us closer to Christ-like characteristics. Further along in the prayer, lead us not into temptation. God will protect us. God will ab abandon nobody to the damnation of evil. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But the temptation will provide the way of a... Uh, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Whatever your struggles have been, God saw you through them and you are now stronger because of them. Whatever scars you have are now war wounds and reminders that you were endured. God didn't leave Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't leave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. He didn't leave David when he sinned. He didn't leave Samson at the end of his life, which was mostly full of selfish ambition and fornication. God will not leave you. We have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses because he was tempted with everything that we are yet without sin. And the last line in the Lord's prayer is deliver us from the evil one. God delivers all those who follow him, obey him, and consecrate the gospel. If we follow God's commands, there is nothing but joy and success that will occur through the fruit of it. Now, there will be struggles of this world while we follow God. That is inevitable. But what it's worth and what the end goals are, are tremendously full of blessing and, hope and goodness. Even when we fail or fall by the wayside, he still delivers us because of his compassion and love for us. He ultimately delivers us through Jesus and the sacrifice that he gave to us, but he delivers us every single day. The Israelites are a, a testament to that over and over again. And so my challenge to you is adopt this prayer into your life. Really harness the, the power and energy that it produces and utilize it daily and see how God continues to bless you through this prayer. I love you, church.